Hey everyone, if we're meeting for the first time, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where our mission is simple, to help you pass your real estate licensing exam. In today's video, we're gonna cover a real estate math problem. It's called coinsurance or calculating coinsurance. It's a math problem that you have to know for your real estate licensing exam. So let's take a look at today's video. So in today's real estate exam prep video, we're gonna discuss a concept called coinsurance. Now coinsurance is a real estate math problem that you have to know for your real estate licensing exam, in particular for those broker candidates. Not to say that you won't have it on your salesperson's exam if your state has uh, two separate licenses, but definitely on your broker's exam. And if you are a property manager, and you, you manage any kind of property other than single family homes, you definitely need to know how to do uh, this calculation. And that's where you're really gonna see it. Now, coinsurance, coinsurance. Now, first of all, coinsurance has nothing to do with, um, has nothing to do with your health insurance, like coinsurance, where you have two types of insurance for health. This has nothing to do with that. It's typically for non-residentially zoned types of property. It's typically for your larger apartment communities, commercial properties, industrial office, those type of things. And, and the, the key here is your coinsurance carrier is gonna have a certain level of coinsurance coverage that the owner is going to be required to maintain. And typically it is a certain percentage of the replacement cost or the market value depending on the carrier. And I've seen it go both ways. Typically it's 80%. So a carrier is gonna require the owner to maintain 80% coinsurance of the replacement cost or 80% coinsurance of the market value. It's, it's very important that if you're the property manager or the owner, and you're required to have coinsurance that you maintain or stay on top of what the new replacement cost is or the, the new market value. And typically you wanna do a, some type of market analysis every year to make sure that you're fully coveraged. Now, if the owner doesn't maintain that coinsurance coverage as required by the policy, then what happens is if there is a casualty and you make a claim to your coinsurance carrier, then you're gonna get less all right, your check's gonna be a lot less than it normally would be. And the other thing is, is for whatever reason, students get hung up on deductibles. With this type of insurance coverage, we really don't see deductibles like you would in your no normal homeowner's insurance policy or with your automobile policy. It's calculated differently. So I'm gonna show you how to calculate coinsurance. So let's take a look at this. Now, the great thing about calculating coinsurance coverage is the formula is very simple to remember. It's did divided by should times claim equals the amount of your check. Now what that stands for is how much coinsurance coverage did the owner have divided by how much coinsurance coverage should the owner have had times the amount of the claim that you've submitted to your coinsurance carrier. And when you do the math, that will equal the amount of your check that you're gonna receive to make those repairs uh, on the property. So let's put this into practical terms here and add some numbers to this formula. Number one, and I got your formula up there. The first step to this, and the good thing is there's five steps to figure out this formula. Step one, we have to find out what is the, the amount of coinsurance coverage. Number. Let's say in our example, the replacement cost of this commercial building or the market value of this building is a million dollars and the coinsurance carrier requires the owner to maintain 80%. Coinsurance is 80%. So we just do the simple math. We take a million dollars, we multiply it by 80%. That gives us a coinsurance coverage of $800,000, meaning the coinsurance carrier is gonna require that owner, the should part, that owner should maintain $800,000 in coinsurance coverage. That's step number one. Step number two is we have to find out how much coinsurance coverage did the owner actually have? So let's say in our example, the coinsurance coverage or the owner did have 800,000. All right, so now we have the did and the should. The owner did have $800,000 in insurance coverage. They should have had $800,000 in insurance coverage. So let's calculate what happens when there's a claim. Step three, 
we determine the amount of the claim that we're going to submit to the insurance uh, carrier. In our scenario, let's say a storm came through and there was $100,000 in, in damages to the property. So we have all the, the, the essential elements we need to do the calculation. So we take, using our formula, did, divided by should times the claim, we take 800000 which is the amount of coverage that the owner did have. We divide it by 800000 which is the amount they should have had. That means our co-insurance coverage is 100%. 100%. So step five, the final five, or this final step here, we put in our, our damages. So we have... $100,000, which is the amount of our claim, times 100%. That is our co-insurance coverage from step four. When we do the math, that means the, the co-insurance carrier is going to give us a check for $100,000. That means they are going to insure $100,000 of the claim, which is basically the entire claim. Pretty simple when it's a 100% across the board. The owner did their part. But what happens when the owner has less? Their insurance coverage that they did have was less than what they should have had. And how does that happen? First of all, it happens when the owner, for example, let's say the co-insurance carrier uh, is doing it based on the market value of the property. And the owner for two or three years just didn't keep up with the market value accurately Therefore, they didn't keep up with the, uh, the coverage that they should have had. So let's look at a, an example here, following the same five steps and using this formula. Step one is we need to determine what, how much coinsurance coverage should the owner have had. And it, again, doing the math, it's a million dollars times 80% equals $800,000 in coverage. That is the should. Step two is finding the did, how much co-insurance coverage did the owner have? So let's say that um, we discover that the owner only had $600,000. That's how much they did have. All right. So we then we have a $100,000 claim because a storm came through. Now we have the three elements that we need to do our calculation. So let's look at step four. We, we divide, we take $600,000, which is the co-insurance coverage that the owner did have, we divide it by 800,000, which is the coinsurance coverage they should have had. That gives us a percentage of coinsurance coverage of 75%. So that's less than the 100. And when we include step five here, remember we take the amount of the claim, which is $100,000. We multiply that by our, our coinsurance coverage that we calculated in step four, which is 75%. And the insurance company is going to pay $75,000 on that $100,000 claim. So as you can see, it's very important that as a, an owner or a property manager, that you always maintain that proper amount of co-insurance coverage and making sure that the uh, replacement cost value or the um, market value is always properly being updated to make sure that you have the proper coverage. If you're going to continue studying, I highly recommend that you check out this video right here. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. There's a lot of benefits for me. Click the little circle to the, to the left there and then comments, questions down below in the comment section. I would appreciate it. That's all I got for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next video.